Hey guys, what's up? So I suck at math. Should I be a programmer? This question has been posed uh, or raised by a lot of different people. And they all have the same question about whether or not, you know, they can be a programmer if they suck at math. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that you can be a programmer if you suck at math. Uh, but one of the good things about math is that there are many free resources out there that you can learn from in order to be good enough to be a very good programmer. Even if you're doing complex mathematical programming, you could still accomplish that goal. One of the things uh, about math, in my opinion, is that when, it, like, when I go back to my earlier days in, in, in grade school, I was always one of the better mathematical students in my class because I, I followed the instructions, I understood how to solve problems, and I was able to solve the problems no problem. The kids that struggled, in my opinion, were the ones that tried to um, not understand the core foundations of how to solve the problem. So that you know they they would you know slack on that area, and then of course they wouldn't be able to solve the problem correctly because in math you're either right or you're wrong. the The thing about math is that not everybody sucks at math. In fact, I would say that nobody sucks at math. The people that suck at math are the ones that give up and they stop trying. There are certain people that are going to learn mathematical concepts faster than others. That's you know normal. There's also people that are going to be able to crunch those numbers in their head because they think more logically uh, with numbers than other people do. In fact, some people, some of the greatest mathematicians were absolutely insane. So you could argue that you don't want to be that way. But the, so there's visual learners and then there's the, you know the logical people that are just you know naturally good with numbers inside their head and they just have those gifts. But the thing about math is that you just need to understand the core concepts, right, of how to solve the problem. Now, if you do suck at math, there's all kinds of different resources, um, and and you could get up to date as you know as quickly as you want. Um, so, one of the resources I do want to share, and just you know, you guys may already know this, but Math.com has been around for a long time. It's a relatively basic, plain-looking website, but the the concepts there you know they date back now probably more than a decade or something like that as far as when this site was first put up and it's all very good and it's very free and you can't beat that so one of the sites that i do want to mention you can see it's actually advertised here this ixl in fact they're headquartered in northern virginia um this website is more for you know, i wouldn't say children but it's more visually presented so people that like colors and they don't like the boringness of math.com this site is very good. Now, the downside, though, is that it is not free. So, um, the, if you are some sort of, you know, somebody that likes, the, you know, the colors and um, it does visual presentations and stuff, and just has the better UI, that this is a good site to check out. We all know about Khan Academy. Khan Academy was uh, started by Solomon Khan, the uh, the Harvard graduate, I believe, and um, you know he gets some criticism for being a uh, basically a self-taught educator so even though he's highly educated himself he never got a teaching degree or anything like that and he's actually teaching millions of people how to how to program or how to do math and and study history and things like that and um, and, and you know I guess you know in some ways you know rightfully so people are going to criticize that because the internet allows you to be able to do that but but here's a news flash I mean this is something that is is taking storm across the entire web people are teaching other people how to do stuff YouTube taught me how to fix my car and literally pull out transmissions out of my car and things like that. They teach you how to fix boat engines. It teaches you how to fix electronics and how to program. And I mean, and, and, not all, and most of this stuff is coming from people that are in the trenches. Because if we're honest with ourselves, some of the professors that are teaching some of these subjects, they don't even know what they're talking about from a real business sense. Like, for instance, when I, uh, when I was taking business courses and IT courses for my community college business degree, some of the concepts there, they were talking about buzzwords and things like that from like three and a half, four years ago. And then they were trying to apply those concepts in ways that, that make no real sense, you know, in the, in the, in, from what you see in the trenches day in and day out, not just in business, but as a programmer. So in some ways, you know, professors, you know, they may be great at teaching, but, you know, if they're not in the trenches with us in the real business environments that, you know, th that there's nothing wrong with getting education from the people that are in that that field so if you're programming some of the best ways to learn how to program is like peer programming you're, you're looking at the way your peers are, are actually you know writing code and solving problems and and, and your peers aren't necessarily uh, educated or, or have certification or teaching degrees and things like that so I think we're going to continue to see this kind of revolution in fact the writing's been on the wall so much that we've now seen Coursera get uh, brought up and Coursera has you know the backing of venture capitalists and now you have 
uh, all these different major universities, some of the best universities in the entire world are actually providing courses on Coursera. But the problem with Coursera is that it basically says here you can you can study some of this material and here you can have all this stuff for free, but you're on your own. We're not going to help you individually. And unless you pay like five or six hundred bucks for the certification, you're not even going to be allowed to take a test and be graded on it or anything like that. So Coursera is obviously trying to make money to make this, you know, they're trying to capitalize on this whole um, education wave that's that's popping up online. And um, and, and for for the most part, it's still really good because you can learn a lot of this stuff for free. But at the same time, it sucks because of the sink or swim thing, and you're on your own. And you know, even though you do pay six or seven hundred bucks for a certification from Duke University, it's not a f true certification from Duke University. It's like a Coursera certification that you paid six or seven hundred bucks for. And some um, some some companies out there may not hold the certification in any sort of high esteem or anything like that, even though they should. But the point is, is that these certifications are what you make of them you know so if i created a class and started doing certifications my certification is going to be kind of the same thing it's it's worth the paper that it's printed on it's it's only over a period of time does that paper become valued and i guess we're yet to see what kind of value coursera is going to provide but i do know that it's kind of expensive and and that's kind of a turn off for me personally just because i don't I don't feel like it's necessary for me to spend that much time in a subject, pay 700 bucks, and then you know get very little feedback, and then have a certification that may not be accepted somewhere else. So, um, basically, as far as certifications go, I would hope to have a cheaper certification than what uh, much of the certifications on Coursera are being offered. So, one of the things I do want to just, uh, just yeah, I guess make sure I pronounce is that. I don't think anybody sucks at math. Math is a universal language. It goes back to the BC days. Um, the people that suck at math are the ones that just ha forgot how to solve the problems or never learned how to solve the problems right to begin with. Um, math kind of sucks because you do have to follow steps in order to solve problems. I hate math when it comes to learning. To I hate math in the sense that I hate having to learn how to solve a problem in math like so if I if if there's some specific way that I have to solve some algebraic question or something like that that's the kind of stuff that kind of annoys me because I want to be able to just skate through it and math is not a subject that you can just skate through and bullshit your way through there are many courses I've taken in my life where I can skate through it literary analysis and things like that I can just I can bullshit my way through it and, and I, I can still get a good grade and math if you don't know how to solve the problem you're going to be wrong most of the time, unless it's some sort of multiple choice, and then you have a 25% chance of getting it right, assuming there's four questions. So with math, though, I mean, I don't think anybody sucks. It's it's the universal language of the web. Different cultures, uh, you know, we all have math, and and math has been driven forward by all the different cultures and in and, and countries and civilizations and, and, you know, from ancient times to advanced times. And basically, I would say that, you can still be a good programmer even if you don't have some of those math concepts down. I don't think that you should just sit on your laurels and not do anything about it. I think that you should try to take advantage of these free resources and try to make sure that you don't try to run before you learn uh, learn how to crawl because programmers, they love to do that. They love to start getting into things um, just you know, quickly try to see how they can make money with it or how they can make their product better, and and they don't truly understand the foundations behind it because there's so much there. You know, there's some new framework out every day. So, um, it, you know, with pro programming, we can sometimes hack together a working solution, and that may be good enough for what we're trying to do. But in math, you can't really hack together your your understanding of how to solve problems. So. I mean, I would just say if you're going to learn a concept, make sure you get it down, you know, spend a few days with it. Uh, make sure you have a few days rest before you go back and make sure you understand those concepts before just trying to immediately jump into the next thing. Because in math, if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, but, you know, it's it's a process. So as we, um, I think as we spend more time in it, it'll become easier to relearn stuff and, and learn more advanced subjects. All right, guys, let me know what you think. And uh, please subscribe. Have a good day. Bye.